Okay, we're going to take a few minutes uh, going around the Energy Skate Park. I'm using the uh, Basics version just to keep it clean. Um, just a few more examples of how energy interchanges, etc. Okay, so we're starting our skater up here at the top. You notice this pie chart's going to follow him. Blue is potential energy and uh, green would be kinetic energy. He's at the high point now. The uh, GPE, the gravitational potential energy line, is right here on the ground. Uh, as would be typical. Uh, I'm going to put it in slow motion and let him go. Okay, it starts to fall. Now notice as he falls, he's changing his potential for kinetic. As he reaches the bottom, it's almost all green. You should also notice that his speed is maximized at that point. Um, and he's turned his potential into kinetic. You can also see that over here in the bar chart. Uh, the potential is almost zero. The kinetic is almost max. Notice that the total is staying the same. So we're not changing the energy. We are uh, simply replacing it into different forms. The total is staying the same. On the way up, we're going to do exactly the reverse. Notice the bar, the uh, pie chart becomes blue, and we get potential on the bar chart. So <clears throat> it's just an interchange between the two forms. Again, this is slow speed, so it's not exactly how fast it would happen if we were really watching the person do that. Okay, so now we're going to return the skater to the top. Okay, now I'm going to make the skater large. Now, still slow motion, something you should notice. I've increased the mass a lot, but I have not changed the speeds that are showing up as they move. Uh, if you get on a roller coaster, has anybody ever weighed you and said, well, we can't put you on here because we have too many people on here and the mass is too much? No, the simple fact is that the mass is in both the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So the doesn't it's similar to dropping a heavy object and a lighter object. They're going, both going to fall at the same rate. So having more mass does mean we have more total energy, but the interchange, the amount of interchange, is not affected. So in a number of conservation law type problems, you can cancel out the mass of the object. It will not play a major role role in your work. Okay, we'll reset all. We'll bring the uh, bar graph and the pie chart back up. Um, we're going to move to this type of position. Now, in this case, there's no hill on the other side. So, what we should expect to see is he's simply going to turn and relatively quickly let's return the skater and let him go in slow motion. Notice that he's turning his potential into kinetic. About halfway down, it was half of each. As we get to the bottom, he's turned all of his uh, potential into kinetic. The total thermal energy is staying the same. Um, if we go to this one, okay, we're getting the same thing and one of the things to point out is because gravity is the driving force here, the path, the motions are independent of the path. So the fact that we have different shapes of track is not particularly important. What is important is the change of height of our person. How high are they above the zero line? That'll determine their potential energy, gravitational potential energy, and then uh, the amount of kinetic energy they must have will be based off of that. Now, one thing to be careful about, uh, some people think that, well, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, therefore potential energy is the energy of being stopped. That is not true. Potential energy does not mean you're stopped. It means you are above uh, some zero height that you choose. Okay. <clears throat> now, and something else we want to look at is the effect of friction. So, uh, we'll put the bar chart up there and we'll move him up here. Uh, right now, friction is on, and it's in the middle. So if I let him go, I'm not going to change this to slow motion, but you'll notice that something's happening to him. Uh, he is relatively quickly coming to a stop, and that's because the friction is taking the potential energy and the kinetic energy, and it's doing external work, uh, taking the energy out um, if you rub your hands together, they get hot. Uh, friction tends to make 
thermal energy, the energy of motion of molecules. So what's happened here is the motion of the person has been converted into heat. We can't get that energy back, he stops, the heat dissipates out into the surroundings. Uh, now if we reduce the overall amount of friction, he'll get to move back and forth for a longer period of time, but you should see that every uh, on every move, you notice the red part of the pie chart is increasing more and more of that energy that we put in is turning into thermal energy. And as we change into thermal energy, that is not mechanical energy, therefore we can't move around based off of the thermal energy. It's just an internal vibration of the molecules. Uh, <clears throat> so, unlike the last time, this time, as our skater moves, the first time is the fastest he's going to be going when he reaches the bottom. Notice that that speedometer is no longer tracking up as high. With each pass, it becomes less and less, and therefore less and less kinetic. Therefore, we can get to less and less points higher and increase our potential, uh, and therefore eventually we reach the position where we stop. Okay, so you know if you haven't done so yet, make sure you're playing around with the energy skate park, it's a great way to look at various uh, elements of this concept of energy conservation. It is a system that we're talking about. So uh, when we talk about that thermal energy, we're talking about this larger system. The track is what's getting warm, the skateboard is getting warm. Uh, the energy is being dissipated out of our particular system. If we were to keep track of the energy of the skater and the track, and we kept all that part of our system, the total energy, notice that total bar over here never changed. The energy of the system didn't change, but we took energy away from the skater. Okay, so when you think of work and energy, um, keep in mind that you're talking about it. You have to talk about a system. You have to make clear what is it that you are um, analyzing. Uh, if it's a larger system, that's going to be different than if you're saying just the energy of the person. And uh, that's it for the Energy Skate Park.